Hey guys, this is Javier with Laguna Tools, and today we're bringing you a new video on our Smart Shop 2 Elite. We'll be using Mosaic software in this video, and we'll show you how to start with the standard base cabinet and how to create a store display with it. Um, I'll kind of go through certain ways that we used our Mosaic software to not only create the display, but show you how to make it using our standard base uh, and tall cabinets. So as always in Mosaic, you can always customize your name. You can have your um, customer name, the job name, the address, phone number, and all that to make it easier on your back end. So we'll go in through the room. You can see our wall. I just did a common wall. I added a door because that was actually on site. And then we'll go over and look at our products. So I already have these laid out and drawn but we'll go ahead and we'll go through one to show you how I went from a tall cabinet to a display style cabinet like this. So I'll give you guys a little 3D rendering. And then here you go. Here's what we ended up with. So here I actually started with a Lazy Susan and then I made different dimensions for our back, our rights, and ends to end up with this type of shelf. So we made it adjustable. You can see they got three, three holes per shelf. So whenever new product comes in that's a different size, they can always adjust up or down. You can see the operations. There we go. So as always, I always I personally like qualified construction. So I, we do the dado, and I also pre-drill the holes for um, assembly. So you can see that there. So originally this one um, had to be seven feet, but due to uh, material size and to make it easier for handling, we actually made it as a two piece. So this guy will actually butt up to here. So that guy's actually gonna go there. So that's that long piece right there. So now we'll go back into Mosaic and I'll do one of these cabinets to show you how we actually got to where we did. I'm gonna save it. <clears throat> so as always, you have your library here on the left. You have your base cabinets, um, your wall cabinets, and then we have our tall cabinets. So in here is where you would choose what you want to do. So we can do a tall single, a tall pair, but since we're not really going to be using any of the doors, we'll just go with the tall single, bring that in. It'll set it for us. And then we only want these to be um, seven feet. So we want our height to be 84 inches, our width 30 and our depth 18 right here. So we'll go ahead and do the same for that one. So we'll do 30, 84, and then 18. And then we do not want any finished ends. So we'll hit none. So now we're actually gonna customize it to fit what we want. So we'll click on the cabinet and then we'll go to edit and under edit is where we can see everything on the cabinet. You can scroll to see what it looks like now. You can zoom in, you can see all the detail. 
So we'll, we're going to go into the face, and here's our face. So we're actually going to clear it. So now we have a nice open area. Same for the interior. So here we want to get at least five shelves. So if you go, you have a couple of choices. You can split it two ways, um, vertically or horizontally, or we can do it this way. So we want five equal, equal sections of adjustable shelves. Hit OK. And automatically it will measure it and take away the difference from the thickness of the material to give you an equal of uh, 15 and 3 16 So for this cabinet, because we already know it's simple, we just want adjustable shelves, we would be done. So we would hit OK. And here is the finished product there. So as you can see, everything is identical. We started from a tall cabinet, but rather than having to cut the cabinet, then having to do the whole separately or having to draw them in here separately, we can just go in through the cabinet, edit it, and you have all these functions in here. So you can do the shelves. Um, we can also add specific hardware. So you can see the shelf pins we're using. We're doing the, our joint method is conformat. So now that we have our cabinets ready to go and we know what we're going to look for and what everything's going to look like, we can go through and actually go through the cut list and uh, check out our nests. So we'll go ahead. Always, material always comes in at three quarter. Um, verify your thickness, especially with qualified construction. Um, measure if it's a consistent source, then just measure it once and then you're pretty well off. Um, Depending on what your style is, um, you're either going to click grain or no grain. This will make sure everything lines up grain wise. And our trim width, we always cut a quarter inch uh, inside. So we never use the wood factory edge. You can also delete parts you don't want to cut. So like if you if you do if you don't do any of the hidden toes or the back toes, we can always delete those. Um, but for now we're going to go through the whole process. So it's a CNC router we're cutting with. Um, I already have our tool set because we cut this on our Smart Shop Elite. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and hit Optimize. You see all our nest form in there. So you have 12 patterns here. And then if we scroll over, yep, there's one more there. So it's a total of 13 sheets, what we're going to be using here. So we'll go ahead and say this guy here so here you can see like if we were going to cut this on our smart shop 4 auto loader with a pre-label all these numbers would actually be labeled before it was cut but for us since we're not we're, we're using our standard ss2 elite um, we can either label these parts by hand or you can also do the dymo printer and print them and stick them on so you can kind of see the x is where your uh, label is going to go so here we have our unfinished back, a fixed shelf, we have a couple of toes, front toes, and then we have the sleeper toes. These are very handy, the sleeper toes, when you're um, spanning bigger than 36 inches uh, on the bottom, it'll actually support the bottom better so you don't have any sagging and it doesn't stress the joints or the screws when something heavy gets sat on there. So that's why for what we're doing here on the display base, we really want these sleepers. So we'll go ahead and generate the G-code. So you can see the tool set's already set, our post processor is already set. So we can go ahead and calculate it. And so if you notice something interesting, it's only given us the 3 8 the cutout. But I know that all these have dados as well. So what we need to do is close it. We can flip parts. And then we'll go back to generate. And now you're going to notice there's more uh, tools on here. So now you can see first we're going to come in with the 3 8 and do our data or our qualified tenant. So it'll go through and do all that. And you can see it do it on the small ones as well. So on the one difference you'll see on the fixed shelf, I did not do a qualified construction because I wanted a little more meat on the wood for that dado. So that is full dado width. 
And then I always do um, what's called return onion skin. And you can see it here if we edit the path. So we always ramp in, uh, apply what we're always going to do conventional. Now, the small part handling is where um, when you get to your nailers, stretchers, front toes, um, those, depending on the size, you can see here my area is 144 by 5. This is the minimum. Um, anything smaller than this will get a return on your skin. So what that's going to do is it's going to leave a thickness around the entire small piece of 15 thou. Um, and so it's going to cut through basically 95% of the material. It'll come back with an offset so you don't have a, any uh, variances on the material edge. We reduce the speed by 20% and then it'll come and clean out that onion skin. So that, that's going to guarantee these smaller parts that we have aren't going to move. Because if you think about the load, we're going to put on trying to cut three-quarter inch depth in one pass um, on a small part, we do have the chance that it can move. That's why always on smaller parts do return onion skin. That way you guarantee your parts are clean cut and won't move. So now that we have all our patterns ready to go, we can output everything in a G-code and then we'll take it right over to the machine. All right guys, so the nests are ready to go. We loaded them into the controller. Our first sheet's gonna uh, cut through some three quarter inch plywood. It'll have about two tool changes. Let's check it out. So that was sheet one of our 12 sheet job. Now, I don't know if you can tell from the video on how smooth this machine interpolates, but you can tell right on the edge, it's got that great Laguna edge quality. That was sheet 12 of our nest. Uh, we're all done and let's assemble these guys. As always guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions on our Smart Shop Tool Elite or any of our CNCs, feel free to give us a call or visit our website. Thanks.